Hi, welcome to How to Help Your Kids Read the Tricky Words, Part 2. This is me. My name is Jocelyn. I'm a mum, teacher, and I'm here to help. I'm really passionate about empowering parents to be able to help your kids and not have to rely on others all the time. So we've just had an introduction to some new vocabulary, phoneme, and digraph. And at this point, your brain might be exploding with new information, but I hope that it's not overwhelming. Remember, it takes time to learn to rethink reading and spelling. We've learned that words contain phonemes or sounds. How many phonemes or sounds do you think there are to learn about? Well, if you said 26, I'm sorry to have to tell you, no. Most of us have been taught one letter matches one sound. So the letter A says A, B says B, etc. We learnt the alphabet and sounds in our first year of school and then we're expected to magically pick up the other stuff through repetitious spelling lists where you memorise a bunch of words and then forget them the next week. We weren't taught and most kids still aren't taught that there are actually 44 phonemes or sounds in English and over 150 ways to represent them. We've only really been given part of the picture. So in the last video, we looked at spelling choices for the phoneme E. And remember, that's not the letter E, the sound E that we can hear. Let's look at some of the other spelling choices available to us. And these are just a small sample. So if we think about the phoneme I, there's I as in high, I as in light, I as in pie, I as in line, I as in my. And you'll notice that some of these spelling choices are made up of one letter, some of two letters, and one has three letters. And one of the keys to successfully reading is helping children recognise spe spelling choices within words in a text. Before we look at how to help children sound out effectively, we need to examine why the usual methods of teaching reading aren't working. One of the reasons that our kids struggle when they learn to read is that they're taught inefficient and often damaging strategies from their very first days at school. Your child will likely have brought home predictable, repetitious texts a bit like this. They probably got a bit stuck on the first page, so you help them out. You read, see the blue car. On the second page, your child probably said, see, and you said, see the spotted car. And they repeated you. By the third page, they had it. They read, see the pink car. Fourth page, no problem. See the orange car. The problem here is that if your child is being sent home with these readers, they haven't yet learned that GE is a spelling choice for J, or that AR is a spelling choice for R, or that double E is a spelling choice for E. They have merely memorised the lines that you've said to them. In truth, the fourth page could have looked like this, and it would have made no difference to their reading, because truthfully, they actually weren't reading. Sure, Children might pick up a couple of sight words from these readers, but they're also picking up damaging strategies that set them up for failure. And it doesn't get any better when they get older. So let's have a look at some of the inefficient strategies that children are taught in school. The first one is look at the first letter, look at the picture, and think about what the word could be. And I've given us a little bit here um, of the saggy baggy elephant, which we might remember from our golden books. So reading, in this case, might sound like this. Why are you shaking the jungle all to p p pink p pumpkin? Parrot. Hmm. Now I'm sorry, but that is not efficient reading. 
Next, they might be taught to think about what word would make sense. So reading might sound like this. Why are you shaking the jungle all to bits? If they've looked at the first letter, they might say, Why are you shaking the jungle all apart? And sorry, that's not efficient reading either. Finally, they might be asked to keep on reading to see if what they have said has made sense. So your child might say, Why are you shaking the jungle all apart? cried the parakeet. They followed the strategy and it's still not right. That's not efficient reading either. So the information that I'm sharing with you today is not just my opinion or the rantings of a fringe group of crazy teachers. The information I'm sharing with you comes from many years of research outlined in reports produced by the governments of Australia, the USA and England over a decade ago. The first link is for the report from the 2005 National Inquiry into the Teaching of Reading, that's Australian. The next link is to a report that's just been released this year in New South Wales. And both reports support what I'm telling you today. Regardless of these widely available reports and others just like them, we can apply our common sense to this situation. If the way that children have been taught to read for the last 40 years is so effective, then why do so many children and adults struggle with reading? It's because there's another way and what's been done has been really, really ineffective. So let's have a look at what you can do to help your kids as they're reading to you. So we'll go back to that sentence from part one. The little boy went into the woods to look for some birds. We saw that there is only one word in this whole sentence where the one sound, one letter thing holds true. That's the word went. Every other word requires some knowledge of spelling choices to accurately sound them out. The words the, into, to, for and some will probably have been taught to your child as sight words and we'll talk about those in another video. So let's pretend that your child gets stuck on the word boy. How do you help? You could just tell them the word but that doesn't really help them to learn to manage unfamiliar words. Instead, you could model good word attack or problem solving strategies. I recommend having a whiteboard or pencil and paper handy when reading just for this purpose. So if your child gets stuck on the word boy, write the word on the paper or whiteboard and ask, what is the first sound in the word? But don't ask them to look at the picture. We are teaching them to work things out from the text not guess from the pictures. So ask them to identify what the first sound is. Then draw a line under the O and the Y asking, what does your mouth say when you see these letters together? Or if you know that they don't know, just tell them. This is a spelling choice for oi. Let's put it together. B, oi, boy. So we'll try it again for the word look. Write the word on the whiteboard or paper. Ask your child to tell you the first sound, not look at the picture. So it's ul. Put a line under the u. Either asking your child what this is a spelling choice for or explaining that this is a spelling choice for u. And then the k. So you say to them, let's put it together. Ul. By you knowing about the spelling choices, you can help give your child the language to effectively problem solve to read new words, not just guess from the picture or the first letter. Even if your child isn't receiving this type of instruction at school, you approaching reading this way will help them immensely. On a side note, if your child is having difficulty with more than five words on a page, the book is too hard and the level needs to be reviewed. So let's us review. Phonemes are sounds we say when we speak. They can be represented by one, two, three or four letters. 
There are 44 phonemes or sounds in English and over 150 ways to represent them. There's not just the 26 letters and their sounds. It is important to know about spelling choices so you can help your child identify them in words they are reading. If your child does not know the spelling representation in a word, just tell them. Reading is not a guessing game. Do not tell your child to look at the picture for clues when reading. Instead, have them focus on problem solving using the text in front of them. Keep a whiteboard or paper close by when reading to help you problem solve unfamiliar words together. There is strong and reliable evidence for the information presented today. Change in teaching practice has been called for across the English speaking world for a decade with little or no effect. Children continue to be let down by this every day. But you can make a difference to your child's reading success. In the next video, we'll look at how to use the spelling choices when writing and sounding out for spelling. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or suggestions for things you'd like to see, please feel free to email me at readingsuccesswithjocelyn at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching the second part of the movie. I look forward to hearing from you.